one of the many applications of chemical equilibrium applies to acids and bases. This video is going to deal with acid-base theory and the acid-base theory that we adopt in our syllabus is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. There are other theories and you may have met other theories but the only one they will now test is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. First thing you need to know is definitions. An acid by definition is a proton donor. A base by definition is a proton acceptor, pretty obviously, as they are opposites of each other. I'm going to show you um, an example of a very familiar acid, hydrochloric, and show you how it works and some of the terminology that you will need to be familiar with. Let's take then HCl. Now the first thing to appreciate is that HCl, if I say to my students, what's the name for HCl? They straight away say hydrochloric acid, sir. But that may or may not be correct. You see, HCl is also hydrogen chloride, which is a covalent gas that has no acidity whatsoever. If you were to test the pH of HCl gas in a dry environment, there would be no acidity shown on that pH scale. HCl gas becomes an acid when water is present. And when water is present, we get a system set up where H3O plus and Cl minus are being formed. So let's have a little look to see what's going on here. Remember in our definitions of acids and bases. HCl has lost an H plus when it becomes Cl minus. That H plus has gone to the H2O, which has turned into H3O plus. Therefore, using the definitions, this is now an acid donating the proton to the base water, which accepts that proton. Since this is reversible, in theory, the reverse reaction should take place as well. In a moment, you'll see that in this particular case, it pretty much goes 100% to the right. However, in theory, the reverse reaction could take place. So if this reacts with that, which of those would be acting as the acid and which of them would be acting as a base? Now, if I pose questions like this, pause the video if you need to, and then answer it and then re restart the video. Clearly, H3O plus is losing a proton and therefore it's acting as an acid and Cl minus accepting that proton is acting as a base. Some terminology. HCl is an acid and Cl minus is its conjugate base. H2O is a base and H3O plus is its conjugate acid. HCl and Cl minus are a conjugate acid-base pair. H2O and H3O plus are a conjugate acid-base pair. One thing you'll notice is this forward reaction dominates here. What does that mean? Well, if this is clearly reacting with this to become those, this is a strong acid, but the base is a weak conjugate base. So strong acids have weak conjugate bases because this doesn't particularly want to accept the proton and go back again. This, on the other hand, desperately wants to get rid of its proton. So when you have a strong acid, you will have a weak conjugate base. If you have a strong base, you'll have a weak conjugate acid and so on. Use the terms strong and weak. I'm, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to know what those terms mean. Whatever you do, do not use the terms dilute and concentrated if you mean strong and weak. I'll show you what I mean. HCl is a strong acid. Leaving out the water this time, this is the usual equation you would write for HCl. Let's now take an acid like ethanoic. 
the acid that's in vinegar. Its formula is CH3COOH, and it will also form H+, and it'll form the anion, the ethanoate anion. That's a three then. Okay. Now you'll notice I've put a single arrow there, indicating that this dissociates, ionizes 100% to give those ions. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Therefore, I'm not going to put an arrow point in one way only. To be honest with you, the back reaction dominates this particular system. So this time we put a reversible arrow. And that reversible arrow means it could lie on one side or the other. The reality is it lies heavily on the left hand side. Very, very few of those molecules dissociate into their ions. So there we have a strong acid and a weak acid. In the syllabus, they will expect you to know hydrochloric, sulfuric and nitric are strong acids. They'll expect you to know that carboxylic acids in general, the family of them, are weak acids. They include things like citric acid in lemon, lemons, oranges and so on. They include tartaric acid, which is in grapes. These are all acids that we can eat safely. So clearly they can't be very strong. They also expect you to know that carbonic acid is a weak acid and it's probably one of the weakest acids of them all. This is simply when carbon dioxide dissolves in water. And if you have drunk a fizzy drink, then you have drunk carbonic acid. Okay, so that's an example of a strong acid and a weak acid, but they also expect you to know bases. Now, sodium hydroxide is the classic example of a strong base. Again, it dissociates 100% when you put it in water. You also should be aware that the other members of group one, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, all of the group one hydroxides are strong bases. And the other one they mentioned as a strong base is barium hydroxide, which is pretty low down in group two. You need to know they are strong bases. The example of a weak base is ammonia which I do have to put water in now because otherwise I can't get an equation. And that forms NH4 plus and OH minus. So you'll notice the bases are producing hydroxide ions. This one, 100% to the right. This one, almost 100% to the left, similar to the carboxylic acid. Now again, you are expected to know some weak bases. Ammonia is the classic. And of course, if you know your organic chemistry, you will recognize that if I substitute um, one of those hydrogens by a carbon chain, what we call an R group, then I'm making an amine. So amines are also weak bases. And that's all I want to talk about for now, except to say that you can have a concentra concentrated solution of any of these you can have a dilute solution of any of these. That's something you choose. If I want to make concentrated solutions dilute, what do I do? Exactly, simply add water. So I can, I can, I can actually control the concentration, but I can't control the strength. There is nothing I can do to make that into a strong acid. I can't stop that dissociating completely. The molecules themselves make that choice. So depending on what the molecule is, will depend on whether it's a strong or a weak acid or base. But dilution and concentration is something I can control. So when you see concentration units of moles per liter, if I start with a one mole per liter solution and I dilute that down 10 times, I'll get a 0.1 molar solution. I can do that. I could, in theory, make a dilute solution more concentrated by evaporating off some of the water. But I'm never, ever, ever going to be able to change the extent to which the acid or the base dissociates. That is the choice of the molecule itself.